Greetings. My name is Darkwit. I have been a hypnotist since 2008, and I welcome you to my study. This may be your first time, or you may be coming back again. Either way, welcome. This month is a little special for people in the hypnosis community, something that would refer to as Hypnovember. I'd very much like to celebrate it, but as a facilitator, my schedule can get the better of me from time to time. Sometimes it can be a little overwhelming. The less that you tend to yourself, the more you can feel like a tangle of rope yanking from end to end until there's nothing but a bunch of knots getting in the way of whatever it is that you want to do for the day. It can be paralyzing and stressful, but I'd like to help guide you through the process of untangling that rope and help you realize that you might not be at the end of your rope as you initially thought. So, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to activate this metronome. This metronome is slow, steady, specifically designed to help people find a rhythm. There's a rhythm in everything, a tempo, when it comes to our pulse, our heartbeat, even the way that we breathe the way that the tides of the ocean swell in and out. And right now, I want you to follow this metronome for me. Focus on each individual tick. You don't have to synchronize yourself to it, merely acknowledge it. Allow yourself to fall into your own rhythm. Enjoy the metronome as if you are calmingly breathing in and out every four beats or three beats. In, one, two, three, and out. One, two, three. Inhale through the nose. One, two, three. Exhale through the mouth. One, two, three. Very good. Just a nice, slow rhythm. You don't have to follow it exactly. Just a guiding force to help you down. Very good. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to guide you through a metaphor. It's sort of a process to help calm your thoughts and get you back down into the box, the place that represents your internal thoughts, the form of communication that we build to speak to one another, the representation of your subconscious. I want you to imagine a orchestra. As you're following that metronome, the orchestra is a cacophony of music, of wondrous tones and instruments merging together and finding ways to help bring a harmony. Not oftentimes when we're stressed, that harmony can sound a little bit more discordant. But right now, with your conscious thoughts, I want you to imagine each of your thoughts like an instrument in this orchestra. Your internal monologue serving as the brass, the wake of side thoughts existing as the wind instruments, the flutes, the, the clarinets, the oboes, the bassoons. The feelings of emotions passing through you, very much like the strings. One by one, we're helping them quiet. And as we follow that metronome, the orchestra acknowledges that it is time to put their instruments down for a little while. Maybe some of the instruments keep playing. Maybe some flutter here and there, much like an orchestra does when it's warming up. But the idea is that the instruments slowly grow quiet, leaving just the metronome. Ticking, 
ticking, ticking away, just to keep you focused on guiding yourself deeper. And as the orchestra quiets down, the stage begins to grow quiet. Maybe there was an audience there before, or maybe they were just practicing on their own. But what matters is that they are growing quiet because they know it's time to just let the metronome tick, tick, tick its way down. Because that's where you need to be. Because that's where you want to be. You're not being forced down in this space. You're not being taken anywhere. Merely guided. I am walking along beside you on this journey. And you are enjoying the metronome. We're sliding down here because we want to. Now, I'm going to count down from ten. And as I do, the orchestra is going to get quieter, calmer, more relaxed until it is very sparse. Until there is only the metronome. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two, one. And just like that, the orchestra has set their instruments down. They haven't ceased to be. Merely they are patiently waiting for the opportunity to perform again. A moment of rest. Letting themselves enjoy a moment of respite. Maybe some go to take a water break. But for you, there is only the metronome. There is only you, there is only me, and the metronome. Now that the orchestra has calmed down, it allows us to focus on the more particular minutia of our thoughts. In this case, in this singular instance, the feeling of the box. Now the box is a representation of your subconscious mind. A place that we can go to communicate, to imagine and explore. And all you have to do is follow along with me as we go inside of it. The orchestra normally drowns out its presence because we're just enjoying the music. But here, now that there's only a metronome, we can slowly go inside. I'm going to count to ten starting from one, and when I do, you're going to be in that box again. A nice, pleasant place for us to enjoy. I hope you're ready. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Very good. I'm glad that you've come here with me. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to help work through whatever stress that's bothering you right now. I want you to imagine in your mind, in this box, a bundle of thick rope. It's sturdy almost thicker than your forearm, the kind of rope that can bind large ships to dock, or the kind of rope that can hold up a suspension bridge. It's very strong, and no matter how old it is, no matter how used it is, the strength of this rope has never been in question. However, there are times where when we leave our mental health unattended to, it can be a little mischievous. Very much like any cords or cables, it can get very tangled if we leave it unattended for too long. Thick ropes forming big knots and it appearing a lot shorter than it actually is. So we might feel like we're at the end of our rope. 
there is a nice little ritual that we can do every night, or at the very least, when you feel like it, that can help bring this rope back to alphabetical order. So to begin, I want you to imagine that I am sitting down next to you at one end of the rope with you at the other, rubbing your hands along the thick rope. It might be heavy or it might be weightless. It doesn't matter. What matters is that your hands are focusing on the tactile sensation of where loops become knots, become bindings, become braids. And we're following the rope, following where it goes, where it can end up, things that loop in or out and around with each other. Sometimes it's almost like following a thread back to its original point. Maybe like the thread of the end of a pair of pants, and you find that it's supposed to be part of a bigger binding. But here, we're just trying to follow the ends, and with our fingers, we delicately loosen the knots. They come undone fairly easily, mostly because right now we haven't tried tightening them too often. If we do, then it's not going to take a lot of effort to give a little bit of leverage to pull it loose. Very good. I want you to imagine that I've been doing so at one end of the rope, and you are doing it at the other. I have been untangling knots all my life. It's therapeutic in a way. It's pleasing. I have very idle hands, so working on something as simple as this is something I find very calming. It's a small mundane task that allows me to loosen my own rope, loosen my own tangle, and help make it easier to coil it up later. As we do, and as I'm talking, you're uncoiling a lot of them yourself. It might be difficult at times. It might be frustrating once or twice, but that's why I'm here to lean over and guide your fingers through those knots. I'm very good with knots because sometimes having an outside perspective of where things should go or where they're going can be very helpful. It's why I enjoy puzzles so much. There's something delightful about finding the pieces, finding where they belong, and helping slot them in. Much like we're following this rope, finding the source of where one tangle of knots are and how to slowly unravel them. And just like that, before you know it, the rope doesn't seem to have any knots in it anymore. Even better, the rope doesn't even show signs of strain or frayedness because those knots are ultimately temporary. They're ultimately light things that have a delightful habit of sorting themselves out from time to time. But some of those thicker knots might have a tendency to stay. Luckily, that's why we're here to loosen them up and untangle them completely. But our job is not yet done, my friend. Now, what we want to do is we want to help put the rope away. Now, there is a specific way that we put ropes away. It's not something we can just pick up and toss in a bundle into the corner. That just means it's going to get tangled again. So instead, we're going to coil the rope loop by loop in a nice circle one loop after the other gently moving the rope allowing the thick braids of the rope itself to gently mesh with the coil underneath it almost seems like smooth teeth interlocking designed to fit on top of one another loop by loop your rope can be very long, or it can be very short. It could be just a simple braid, or it could be a long, winding chain. It doesn't matter. It's yours. And 
as time goes on, you suddenly realize that you're out of rope to coil, and at your feet is a neatly bundled coil of rope ready to be used whenever you need it. Ready to be your strength. Ready to be your stalwart protector. And ready to be your lifeline during particular times of stress. I want you to remember this procedure, this feeling of uncoiling your rope. Because the tangle can get the better of us sometimes. But what's important is that we are in control of our thoughts. And this kind of procedure is little more in maintenance than making your bed. It may seem pointless at first, considering it's just going to get tangled up again, but the act of putting things in its place, making things orderly, is a delightful exercise in mental health. It makes you feel fresh. It makes you feel renewed. And it makes you feel like you can respect the little neurons that fire between your ears. Now, now that the rope is put away, nice and tucked and organized and coiled properly, remember this feeling so that you can come back here whenever you want or even just sit on your own, close your eyes, and think about untangling that rope. Or you can come back to my study and we can do this again and again and again. And it's perfectly fine. Just remember that this video is always here, and I am always ready to help guide you. Now, we're going to leave the rope where it belongs, and we're going to leave the box. And I'm going to count to ten, and you're going to wake up, still thinking about that metronome, because it never really left. It just stopped being important while we were dealing with other things. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Awaken. I hope you enjoyed yourself. The tangled rope was something that I think would be of great help to you, because it was of great help to me for this last month, which has been exceptionally busy. And if you look at the other things in my gallery, you might start to see why. I hope you have a wonderful hip November, and I hope you'll see more of my content soon. Farewell.